Hi everyone, have you know about Flame of the Beast? Today we're gonna talk about that peculiar tree and before that, we're gonna know more about our group starting with I'm Atika Mardatila My name is Dimas Arianto Hello, my name is Kanya Nahendra Jaya Hi everyone, my name is Ramiza Bertalenta Our primary goal is to understanding the physical characteristic of trees and also their surrounding ecosystem. We aim to explore how natural ecosystem can serve as model for developing sustainable industrial practices. By studying ecosystem, we are able to identify different plant species and learn how they interact with the environment and ultimately discover ways to utilize natural resources sustainability. And our approach involves collecting, analyzing, and also documenting tree specimen. We will integrate principle of industrial ecology to inform and inspire sustainable practices that can be applied in the field of industrial engineering. This tree comes from species Spatodea campanulata from family of Bignonia seae, from the genus of Spatodea, and have a local name of African tulip tree, Kecerutan, and also flame of the bees. For general description, the African tulip tree comes from the tropical dry forest of Africa. It is often planted in tropical areas for its pretty flowers and good shade. The tree was brought to Hawaii in 1871 to help repair forests. But now, it is known as the one of the most expensive plants there. It grows fast, can grow in shady areas, and quickly grows back after being cut. Its seeds travel easily by wind and water, allowing it to spread and take over areas, pushing out native plants along forests and rivers. For the first identification is the soil. The soil is the last dot soil type and its pH ranging to slightly acidic to natural and moderate to high organic matter content with reddish yellow color caused by elevated iron oxides and the soil texture is like the clay or sandy loam texture providing excellent drainage and relatively high caution exchange the capacity which is crucial for making nutrition available to plants but this is for formed through intense weathering in tropical environment and making it ideal for the African tulip tree next stem the African tulip tree has a tall fast growing stem that can reach 10 to 35 meters over time the stem can become hollow and weak making it likely to break in strong winds or under the weight of its own branches. Because of this, regular trimming is needed, especially in cities. Next, branches. The tree has white, uneven branches that form an umbrella-like canopy, giving lots of shade. Young branches are soft and greenish, but as they age, they become hard and brittle. Regular pruning helps keep the tree safe. The tree also produces large buds that bloom into bright red-orange flower with wavy edges. Next, leaves. The leaves of the African tulip tree stay green all year. They are arranged in pairs with each leaf having six to eight smaller reflex and a soft, feathery look. The reflex are about 4 inches long, dark green on top, and lighter underneath with clear veins. The leaves don't change much in fall and are known for bright colors. They have a slightly bitter taste and have been used in traditional medicine. Okay, next flowers. Spatodea camelulata, commonly known as the African tulip, is a flowering plant with large bell or funnel shaped bloom, mature egg until 15 cm. The flowers are bright red to orange with yellow eyes resembling flame. They grow is clustered at the end of branches and contain a clear liquid. They attract pollination insects and birds. This liquid is also often used by children for play as it can be sprayed like water. The plant bloom years round in tropical regions, especially during the rainy season and at high aesthetic value to its surrounding. Let's talk about the fruit. The fruit has a unique elongated shape that can burst when it's ripe. That way, it can spread the seeds in a widespread area and that's why African tulip tree can be invasive in some tropical areas. Okay, next, living organism nearby, the first heart-shaped green leaf, the second Acalypha indica, the third Microstegium pimineum. Okay, detail of living around the tree, we found unwebs and small birds. Ants were crawling near the roots, likely nesting or foraging. Webs 
flower flowers, collecting nectar or hunting insects. Small sparrow like birds perched on branches attracted by food or shelter. Let's talk about the relationship within each organism. Let's talk about the plant first. From heart-shaped leaf and akalifa and also microstegium, they tend to be having a competition between those all since they are taking each other resources in order to live and survive. And now let's talk about the animal ranging from wasp, bird, and also ants. There is many way interaction can happen between them, such as commensalism or even predatory. Even though many competition for food sources can be happening between them, they're sharing the same relationship with the tree, which is acting as a shelter for them and a place for them to live their lives. Specimen collection samples were carefully taken with a knife in small amount to avoid harming the tree leaf where spirits or their storage in container the process was done digitally. Next is about the benefit. The first one is aesthetic or amenity, popular or mental tree, street or park shade. The second one is ecotourism or minor, attract birds, potentially some visitor. And the third one is traditional medicine, part used in local remedies. And the last one is rehabilitation, quick growth as land restoration. Okay, next, drawbacks. The first invasive species outcompetes native flora, religious biodiversity, the second economic cost or minor, management or removal of invasive growth, the third infrastructural damage or rare root system can impact structural over time. Okay, for the conclusion here, the first one is deepen understanding of campus biodiversity, second, gain insight into three species, structure, and ecological roles, Connected the activity to industrial ecology, highlight the importance of minimizing human impact, and the last one reinforce the value of aligning industrial activities with environmental stewardship. Last but not least, let's talk about our references we use to gain our knowledge in this African tulip tree. It's an excitement and also a journey to learn this African tulip tree, especially in our surrounding environment. Hopefully, this can be a benefit and knowledge to us all. And thank you for your attention. See you next time.